Honorable Minister, Your Interaj, good afternoon. I'm uh, Mr. Sasi Singh, Principal of Tilak High School, Acting Principal of Tilak High School. <laughs> so, I would like to raise my appreciation to the government of the day for dignifying our profession with a decent pay rise and the benchmark for our pays. For so long, our profession has been underpaid and overworked. Vinakabaklevu say for dignifying our profession. When I started teaching, I joined the volunteer scheme, the infamous volunteer scheme of the 80s, at a allowance of three three thousand dollars. This is really significant and it means a lot to me. Say, I have a question. The national budget is effective from the 1st of August. But our, any, our pay comes into effect on the 13th of this month. I wonder why. Thank you, sir. Because the job evaluation is being phased in over a number of months, we, had to, we came up with a policy that applies regardless of which month, okay? And also regardless of the date that you actually sign your contract. So the effective date, as it was on the slide, is the beginning of the first pay in the month that starts uh, when you sign your contract. And that's governed by the pay fortnights. The calendar is published at the beginning of each year. The first pay that starts in August is the 13th of August. Okay? That is the first pay fortnight that starts in August. September, it's a different date. For GWEs, it's also a different date because their pay fortnights are different. But we needed a standard definition so that we knew for everybody how it was defined within the pay fortnights. It is the beginning of the first pay fortnight in the month that you sign your contract. So if you don't sign your contract in August and you sign it in September, it is the first pay fortnight that starts in September. If some people, for whatever personal reasons, are going to sign their contract in October or November, it's the first pay fortnight that starts in October or November. So that's the definition. It's the policy. It was actually published back in May. So tranche three is still being assessed, so they will be September. So their, their pay is effective from the beginning of the first uh, fortnight in September, if they sign their contract in September. Just, just for you, tranche three does not involve teachers. There are other civil servants who are currently being assessed. So even though the budget allocation is from 1st of August, those will come into effect from September. It's whenever it's completed and then they sign the contract. And the next pay, then it becomes applicable from there. Gentleman at the back there. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, if I could just introduce myself, I'm the former confirmed vice principal of Tilak High School and current acting vice principal of Tilak High School. <laughs> if I could just uh, ask a question, one of the most unsettling things for me before I signed the contract was the acting bit. It has taken me 25 years to reach uh, the position of vice principal. And I would be losing that overnight. I want to ask the question, in the other ministries, does a consultant doctor come back down to a registrar doctor, a medical officer, or a nursing sister become an ordinary nurse during this exercise? Thank you. Okay. So actually, in education, your acting is automatic. In the common cadres, so in the ministry itself and across like the deputy secretaries and the directors who were also in the same boat, they even had to put in an expression of interest to get the acting. Now there weren't as many of them and they're not direct service providers. Okay? So that's why it's automatic acting for people in the teaching profession. Nurses, doctors, yes, it applies exactly the same, based on the 15%. Anywhere there is an increase of more than 15%, the jobs will be advertised. Yes, it applies across the civil service. Okay, sorry, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm Mr. Pili, I'm from Tavro Primary School. When I look around, I see some happy faces, some very happy faces, and 
there are some faces which are not that happy. Uh, even though I fall in the happy category, I tend to um, talk about those who fall in the not so happy category. So I just uh, wanted to inquire as to how experience was missed out on the terms of reference of uh, job evaluation, experience of teachers. When I say that, sir, I mean to say that uh, there are teachers in our school, these experienced teachers, who usually teach in you know, a lower primary and they have a lot of work to do. Most probably the job description that was used was not correct at that time. If you could throw some light on that. Thank you, sir. So, thank you. The person and the position are separate. Experience is considered as it is the requirement of the job. So it is considered in the job evaluation as the requirement for the job. The varying levels of experience that the individual teachers have will be assessed in the performance assessment and how they apply that, how they use that experience because I have to point out that there is a difference between being in a job for 20 years and having 20 years of experience. Okay? There is actually a very big difference. Some people gain that experience for the first few years and then they sit back and they relax and they don't continue to learn and they don't continue to develop. So they don't have 20 years of experience. They have five years and then they repeat it. There is a very big difference. But in job evaluation, it's about the job and not the person. So, in fact, you're incorrect. It is actually taken into consideration in the job evaluation exercise. A very good afternoon to you, sir. And uh, myself, I'm not a teacher, but I'm a parent of a teacher who was educated, uh, or rather graduated, last year on uh, December uh, 23rd uh, as a diploma teacher in uh, agriculture. I come all the way from Tabua just because of uh, because I'm not happy with some of the things which I got from the Ministry of Education. Uh, there were <coughs> three. Can I, sorry, can I interrupt you, please? Uh, it's, you're not a teacher. Sir. It's to do with your son. Uh, That's a query. Please send it to that email because we actually have to go to bar. I really want to ask teachers to ask me questions yeah. specifically. I'm not saying we're not going to answer that, that issue you've raised, but we can do it offline. Okay? Please. Thank you. Teachers, please. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I'm Mr. Lamba from St. Thomas's Primary School Assistant Head. In my... I'd like to query the, uh, the signing of contract number 13, Secrecy Act. The officer is bound by the provision of the Official Secrecy Act 1911 and 1920 of the United Kingdom, which remains applicable to the Republic of Fiji. Could you please explain to us what is this oath of secrecy as we teach daily? Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, that's not to say you cannot divulge what you've taught. But you may, in your term, in your employment, may come across something that may be told to you in confidence that, is pre that may be privy only to a few as far as the civil service is concerned. It does not apply to you on a daily basis, of course, everybody knows that. That's there just in case you do actually come across, for example, you may be told something in the course of your employment that is bound by the Official Secrets Act. Unfortunately, we still have many laws that are still from the previous years and they have not been changed and they'll be changed, of course. But that does not apply to your day-to-day -day activities. It's just common logic. Yeah. Um, gentlemen there. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Viren Sarma, Natambu High School. Uh, just a comment, uh, it's really soothing to hear the new system of evaluation where the ability to handle people, uh, experience, decision-making overrides uh, many paper qualifications that you have. Because in the system that we had uh, so far, when people joined the teaching system, some people went straight to upgrading themselves to get higher salaries, and some people spend all the time to master the art of handling people. So it is very soothing to hear that. Uh, we just like to be assured that the right people are handling the promotions so that uh, the ethnicity, this old boy system, and uh, whom you know system, is not, uh, does not affect the promotions of people. My other comments say, 
In the review process, uh, can we please review the APVP positions of secondary schools? Because in my opinion and experience, both should have the same status. If you ask my candid opinion, the AP does a lot more work in school because it's behavioral with children, discipline, and all activities. The VP handles academic. The VP handles people who are already qualified to do the job. The AP handles people who have to be controlled. Okay, as, as we've said in the, in the end that when we are going to do the reforms, part of that is to look at the, the role. See, report on class size staffing ratios, identify the relevant staffing ratios, looking at the roles of vice principal and assistant principal. That's part of the review process. So when they, the team comes around to do the review, they'll also be talking to you too. They'll come around and talk to some of your principals and vice principals and others to get your input. That's part of the review. So you can give them your views, views then. Yes, sir. I and, just and, uh, and, request and, that uh, we are talked. We have some enough time to give our points when this review system happens. Yeah, the review has not started. It will start. Don't worry. Okay. You'll get the time. Not now. Okay. The review, this commenced by the end of 2017. Thank That's you. when they start. Now, your first point about, you know, the old boys network or old girls network, whatever it may be, uh, that, of course, gets addressed to the OMRS. And, of course, as we've said, in particular with the Ministry of Education, we've now said in the panel that actually is going to sit there to assess the applications and do the interviews, they need to be, in particular, J and above, you need to have one person from the Ministry of Education, one person from outside the ministry within the civil service, and one person from outside the civil service altogether. That gives you that high level of independence. But you'll be assessed against the objective tests that are set. In respect of positions below J, you'll have two from the Ministry of Education and one from outside the Ministry of Education to ensure that independence. Okay, next please. Can we give you the chance to somebody who hasn't spoken as yet? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Mrs. Prasad from uh, Wunda District School. And uh, I would uh, like to highlight uh, on what Mr. Pillay has said about experienced teachers. Uh, firstly, sir, to let you know that uh, I think uh, 10 years uh, before ago, I mean, all teachers who were graduating from Lodoka Teachers College, they were the requirement of the government was teacher certificate. And I think what Mr. Pillay has said, that these teachers have been overlooked. Uh, well, I think they were fully fledged to do classroom teaching. And looking at the bands there, uh, if, you, if you've got a copy of this, uh, education snapshot, teacher primary, that's ED8A step 7 to ED8A step 10. If you look at those, that category, all teachers are sitting on the same salary, but with different percentage. Why is the difference there? If, if that could be explained. So the difference is because you were on different steps before, and everyone goes to the step that provides the biggest increase up to 15%, and the steps in the new bands are much broader. So that's why you all, there was not a lot of difference in the old steps. So they all move to the same step in the new bands. That's it. But, of course, going, but also going forward, you have the going forward, of course, to the PMS, you have the ability to move within that band based on the individual performances. I hope you understand. Sorry? Because some were paid more before than the others, and now you're all going to be paid the same. Okay? The percentage increase is different, but you're all going to the same step, because the percentage variance is still within the 15%. To move you up to the next step would be more than 15%. It is fair, you're all doing the same job, you're now all getting paid the same. Okay? It happened the same in the common cadres as well. Because the steps are much broader, there are bigger increases between the steps than there was before. So there is some movement together. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I'm just uh, 
inquiring about the contract, sir. I am one of the officers that has been contracted for three years, and it is due to expire at the end of this year. Um, and with this um, new uh, assessment and exercise of these new contracts, just last week uh, we got the contracts. It was there in front of me. And uh, the contracts uh, says that uh, it will again, if the signing of the contracts expires on the 15th or 18. Uh, so the contract will take me till next year. And uh, I think it was supposed to be like it's a five-year contract. So just clarify on this matter. Uh, am I going to sign a new contract at the beginning of next year? So what the ministry has tried to do, so the regulations say up to five years. Obviously, in a ministry this size, they don't want to issue contracts and have them all finish on the same date in five years' time. So what they've done is people who are currently on contract, they've issued the balance of the current contract. There is no other impact except that, yes, you will get another contract before the end of the year, reappointing you for five years from the beginning of next year. And then your contract end date will be after everybody else's that's here. Okay? It's about spreading the administrative workload in the ministry because there is an undertaking in education that it's an automatic renewal. Okay? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much. Just a, just a request on that point because you know, it's a like, um, big hustle on some of us uh, offices. You know that uh, the beginning of every school year is a very busy time, busy schedule, like uh, people going in in offices. Like, uh, and at times uh, our salaries are being you know, um, stalled at the beginning because of the signing of these contracts. So it's just a concern, sir. No, no, I agree, I agree with you. And, and uh, uh, you can take it from us. You can be assured that that's not going to happen where you'll have a hole in your salary payments. Okay? So we've actually asked the Ministry of Education to bring all that to our attention. And we will make sure before the actual expiry of that contract, you'll get your new five-year contract. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Johnny Rowe from uh, Natumbo High School. Just uh, a few months ago, the primary school, class one and two, numeracy and literacy program was activated throughout the whole of Fiji. There was a group that was uh, assigned, trained and assigned, and uh, ventured out around the, uh, the country to preach this new dynamic uh, literacy and numeracy program. Just uh, going through the salary band, majority of the officers that went out fell in the category, salary category 18,000 moving up to 20,000. These officers, sir, have done uh, wonders for the grassroots people in our country, classes one and two. And they are about to be activated for the class three and four numeracy and literacy outreach. And the salary that they have uh, fell on with the new scale from 18 to 20,500, that is the bottom of the uh, scale band. It is my pleasure this afternoon, for this uh, group, these are unsung heroes in our education system with the grassroots. And uh, the every evaluation program will happen from schools. Uh, it is my plea if their efforts could be recognized and uh, be well placed in the salary band, just high above the base, because they have done marvelous and so much work for our children here. Thank you, sir. Well, okay. So in, I'm aware of the literacy and numeracy program. Uh, there's a couple of things in that. While the, while the program is being rolled out, the Ministry should look at some uh, additional provision while you're actually rolling out the program because you're doing a different job. If we're talking about position-based pay, then it should be rewarded differently to when you're doing a classroom teacher job because you're now training teachers and you're... But it would only be for the period of time that you're doing that. When you go back to your classroom teaching role, then you reoccupy that job and you um, get paid as a classroom teacher. The other thing I would say is that the people who undertake the rollout of that program, that's a fantastic skill that you can use in your future performance, either in your classroom or if you seek promotion. 
So that's how it also benefits you. So longer term benefit, but we can talk with the ministry about how they recognise those positions because I know they seconded people into those teams. So we'll look at how they recognise the difference in the work while the work is being undertaken. Okay. Some of these things obviously are ongoing issues, like, like Jane says, not a permanent position per se. So you've sort of pulled out to do this. So maybe there needs to be a particular recognition of that whilst you're actually doing it. But if you actually go back to the classroom, then you go back to you know, whatever uh, salary range that you fall within. But that's, that's a conversation we're having with the Ministry of Education. We recognize that. Good afternoon, sir, Good afternoon. madam, and all our colleagues. I am Keshni from Rampur Primary School, all the way from Navua. Uh, the first one, just uh, whatever the madam sitting in front, she said, I support her. Just uh, in 2005, the last lot that came out from LTC with certificate, that was in 2005, and they are in teaching profession now, those teachers. Like for me, I am a 12th year teacher. Madam may be 19 year teacher or 20 year teacher, but still she is on $19,041 uh, $19, uh, in this new band, band E, starting from band E. She is 20 years, uh, she is 20 years experience. I am 12 years experience. Somebody here must be 25 years experience. But they are still starting with $19,041 from Band E. That was what she was trying to say. And that's what I am again trying to just make, Madam, you understand that she is having 25 years experience. She is starting from $19,041. I am 12 years experience. I'm starting with $19,041. And those coming out with beard, just two years experience, they are starting with 25,877 band E, EDHG band E, they are $25,877 they are starting with. So her main, uh, she wanted to clarify here was, why is she having 25 years experience and she is starting with 19,000, step from 16,000. That was what she was trying to say. Thank you, we understood the question. Okay, the answer is still the same. It is to, these anomalies existed in the previous system. We can't fix them all in one go. This is the first step of addressing those issues. The first step is transition. You go to the step in the band that gives you the maximum increase up to 15%. After that, we introduce performance assessment and your experience should be demonstrated in your performance and you will move to other steps in the band with greater increases in salary. It is not about time served, it is about performance in the classroom that you will demonstrate using your experience. That is stage two, okay? Thank you, Madam, for the clarification. I was just clarifying on her, whatever she was saying. Now my question is, <laughs> just, my question is about the allowances. The salary bands are inclusive of all allowance except the following. Teachers, if you have this copy here, all these allowance, they are exception. Example, the rural allowance, remote allowance, transfer, transfer allowance, acting allowance. So under this band, which allowance we are getting? All these are exceptions. It says, with the following exceptions. That's right. It so says... we are not getting this. No. Okay, it says, it says salaries are inclusive of all, the, all allowances except for those on the list. So those allowances are still paid as allowances. No, they're not in the bands. <laughs> they're the exceptions. Okay, they're the exceptions. They are paid as allowances. All those allowances you read will continue to get paid separate to your salary. Okay, wonderful. Now, um, you may have also heard that we announced yesterday that those of you, I mean, generally teachers, of course, don't get meal allowances, but there may be when you go for official duties, the meal allowance has actually gone up from $9 to $20. And the meal allowance actually comes, new meal allowance comes into effect from 1st of September. So what, what we are trying to say to you, please 
don't just look at one aspect of it. The entire civil service reform is looking at many other aspects. So example, for example, uh, so for example, there may be other allowances that we could also increase, depending on the, you know, you know for example, rural allowances, but there may be certain hardship allowances that we can also pay too. But it needs to be realistic, it needs to be sustainable. I mean, just to give you an example of the meal allowance, $29 may be okay in maybe Tavua, right? But $9 is not okay in Suva, or maybe Nandi, or maybe even Latoka. So this is why we've gone to $20. Somebody said to me, well, hang on, maybe you're overpaying. Because $20 for a meal, one meal, in Tavua is a lot of money. Well, maybe so. But it cuts both ways. Some organizations, what they do, they pay the meal allowance based on the location in which you're going to claim the meal allowance in. So if you've been sent from Latoka for a particular duty in Tavua, your meal allowance will be based on the Tavua meal allowance. <laughs> Some companies do do that. In the same way, for example, if you go overseas, your per diem depends on the city to you, you go to. So if you go to New York City, your per diem will be a lot higher because the hotel rates in New York are a lot higher than maybe Vanuatu or Samoa. But what we have done, we have made the announcement saying, no, we'll go to $20. We'd rather err on the, on, the, on the side of being cautious and then do a review of it in about two and a half years' time. We can get all the facts and figures in place. But we'd rather give you more. In the same way, you need to look at other areas. How we can, for example, look at teacher-student ratios in terms of some of the hardship allowances. You know, generally some hardship allowances are only given when people go to maritime areas. But I see some, uh, some teachers, like the example that I gave, I went up to Namoli village, you know, up in the middle of the Singatoga River, up in the hills. The kids and the teachers actually come there by Bilimbili, go to the school. Now, there are certain hardships that they face. We have currently teachers who may be teaching in Talevu North, but they have their wives and family home, you know, in Nasinu. They travel every day. So how can we take care of that? An issue also that we are discussing at the moment, I'm not saying they'll be given allowances specifically for that, but we're considering. Some of you as teachers actually, may be spending a lot of your time outside school hours, maybe taking the rugby team, or the athletics team, or the netball team, or soccer team, whatever the case may be. Now if we say we'll give allowances, everybody will want to become a sports teacher. <laughs> so we have to ensure that we do it on a sustainable basis, that the systems are right. But we want to be able to reward people, or at least at the very least, recognize what you're doing outside your normal teaching hours. So this is some, these are some of the things that we are doing. Uh, next person, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, this is Nila Sharma from Yasawa. My question is regarding location allowance. Currently, sir, under the previous system that we have been following, those teachers who are serving in maritime zones whose salary was below 22,000, we're paying 7% pay as you earn tax on location allowance. And those teachers who are above 22,000, we're paying 18% tax on pay as you earn. Pay as you earn tax on location allowance. Now, since the new system is coming in, those teachers who will be below 30,000 and inclusive of location allowance will not be paying tax. Whereas those teachers who are above 30,000 and I will be paid location allowance will be taxed. So I humbly request if the location allowance could be made tax free for all those teachers who are saving in maritime. Thank you, sir. The, the reality is that even if you are p paid over $30,000, the tax rate has still been reduced. That you are still paying less tax even though you may be earning more than $30,000. So that's the benefit you're also getting, additional benefit. But remember that you've also had a pay rise too. Next, please. Uh, somebody who has not spoken, please. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Um, we must applaud the government's effort in uh, recognizing those teachers that have been uh, teaching children with special needs and children uh, with uh, early childhood education. Eh? There's a significant increase in their salary. 
Now, I want to know there's a new venture opened up by the government which is positive commitment to education that is technical and trade institutions throughout Fiji. Now, we want to know whether this trade and technical teachers evaluation was also done within this evaluation or was it just primary and secondary school teachers? So trade teachers are on band F, it's on the snapshot. So trade teachers are actually getting some of them, it's like a 60, 70% increase. But in order to get that, they have to be fully qualified, which means they have to have the trade and a teaching qualification, okay? So yes, they were evaluated in the same way that the other teachers were evaluated. And trade teachers, of course, have quite a significant qualification because they have to have their trade, they have to have years of experience in their trade, and they have to have a teaching qualification. So, yes, the jobs were evaluated and they're on band F. Okay, with this uh, trade uh, uh, teachers, I think uh, there needs more to be done because trade is a high-risk job. The teachers are putting their life on the line when they are entering workshops with many uh, unskilled uh, the students coming, right? So trade is a, uh, is a high risk job and the scope for trade teachers, they are also going to communities doing outreach, doing short courses for the communities, basically in Elanga and all these uh, provinces within the uh, Bar province were covered by the trade teachers all over Fiji. And uh, we just want more to be done in the evaluation for trade teachers because the scope is very big and the risk level is there and uh, it cannot be just merit based, based because most of the tertiary institutions are not giving uh, 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 degrees for trade in trade field like welding and fabrication their highest level is only up to diploma we cannot get degree in fiji for welding and fabrication so those teachers are actually doing other kinds of short courses just to upskill themselves now this means that these teachers cannot go up to the degree level and therefore their salary will always remain within that band. So something has to be done for trade teachers because they are doing other things. So, um, okay. That's so, all, thank you. The qualification requirement for secondary teachers is a degree. The qualification requirement for a trade teacher is a trade and a teaching certificate, okay? So it is different. It's not a degree. The Ministry is working with the University to make sure that the courses are available to provide the educational qualification on top of the trade. Okay? So that's one part. In Australia, for example, I'm sorry to refer to Australia, but in Australia, for example, trade teachers have their trade and then they have um, a certificate for in workplace trainer and assessor and it is recognised as their teaching qualification. So, and we're looking at a similar type of qualification for trade teachers here. The other thing is, please be aware, I did go through the factors. Risk is not part of the factors. We assume that you are competent. We assume that all teachers will provide a safe working environment for them and their students. And that is actually why the trade teachers have gone up. Like, five steps or something from where they were before because it's recognising that there is a lot of problem solving required to provide that safe working environment. Okay? And it's about making sure that you have the resources to be able to operate in that safe working environment. So there was a lot of thought actually put into the trade teaching areas and you can see that we, did, we have already had a lot of discussions around those um, those areas and strengthening the teaching for those those skills. Just, I mean, I think Jane's explained it quite thoroughly, but I, I wouldn't want you to be teaching in an environment where your life is at risk. <laughs> Therefore, you are then in breach of OHS. Some actually technical colleges have been shut down because of OHS issues. So you should not be operating an environment in the same way a normal teacher should not be operating an environment where it is actually going to be in breach of the OHS requirements. Uh, next person, please. I, can we uh, try and sort of, I don't want, I want all of you to answer, but you know, I've got to go and meet teachers in bar too, and I want to take you through the budget, and you know what the teachers in bar are like. So I don't want to be late. Also, uh, please. Uh, and those of you, sorry, if you've already asked a question, please. Uh, if you have any query, csrmu.enquiries.com at gmail.com, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, colleagues.
I'm uh, Taino Saukuru of uh, Pandit Vishnu Deo. Uh, this is a, a request in which I'm speaking uh, on uh, behalf of the teachers to in which both uh, husband and wives are teachers concerning um, transfer of teachers and if the family could be considered. Uh, in my case, I'll give an uh, example. Uh, week 5 of term 1, 2015, my husband is also a teacher, who was 2015, week 5, he was transferred to um, Tailevu, St. Vincent College. And then week 3rd, I was teaching here in Lautoka. And then in uh, 2015, he was transferred, uh, trans uh, that was uh, week 3rd in term 3, 2015, uh, transferred back. And last year, I was transferred to Ovalau when my husband was here in uh, Lotoka. And again, this year, like uh, term three, he has posted again to St. John's College where I was teaching last year to begin in term three. So uh, you have mentioned that in uh, April and August there will be another transfer like uh, for the posts no, no. to be done. No, no. For April, August, next year. No, only if you've got a pay rise of more than 15%. And those people who are acting, those positions, when they have the OMRS, then those appointments will take place by April or September of next year. So if yes. you or your husband fall within that category of the 15% or more pay rise, then you actually have to apply for those positions on the OMRS. Mm -hmm. If you fall below that, then that doesn't apply to you. Yes, sir. But it will involve transfer of teachers. My request yes. is that if uh, both the uh, husband and wives are teachers if they can be posted to the same district so that the family cannot be... I completely be agree with you and to be frank I think the ministry is really goofed up in this area like the example that's quite ridiculous what they have done you know moving people around to ridiculous locations and we agree with you Thank that's you, part sir. of the reform but I think it would be problematic to say to put both of you in the same school oh, because you, that sir. becomes conflict of interest we can't do that also. So that becomes problematic. But I can tell you, you know how I was telling you, I get a lot of Viber messages too. I get a lot of people sending me messages saying, can you please transfer my husband away to some other place? Because <laughs> it's true. And sometimes I get it whilst I'm sitting in parliament. Because my husband is having an affair with the teacher in the school, send them to another school. I'm not saying it is happening in your case. But what I'm saying, that we, we believe that, of course, as much as possible, the, the family at least needs to stay in the same, you know, district uh, because we need to ensure that. Again, it goes part and parcel of being an employer of choice where we provide you a conducive social and good work environment for you to be able to do your job properly. And, of course, I mean, it's not something peculiar also, of course, to teachers. It happens with police officers. It happens also with doctors. Uh, we know people need to be posted to different areas. So that's something that we're taking into consideration, and I'm sorry you actually have to go through that. Thank you, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, unless there aren't any other new questions, okay? Perhaps we'll make it the last one. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir and madam. Uh, just as Ms. Jane had mentioned, for step three, uh, it, it's normally for the new graduates. So what would be the maximum year for a step three officer? So the ones who have been serving for 20 years shouldn't be in those steps? Should they promote to other steps? <laughs> Sorry, can you ask the question again? Through performance, okay, I got the question, sorry ma'am. So, so through performance, you move up through the steps once performance assessment comes in, okay. The contract, the new contract, once it's renewed, will be up to five years provided or up to your retirement age, okay. Some of us are reaching that age.
You know, um, this argument has taken place by many teachers. If you speak to primary school teachers, they will say we have a greater level of responsibility than secondary school teachers. If you speak to certain secondary school teachers, they say we have a greater level of responsibility <laughs> compared to primary school teachers. That's a fact. Primary school teachers say we have all these you know, young minds, you have to mold them, etc. Secondary school teachers saying these are all these budding teenagers with growing hormones, going berserk <laughs> all over the place. It's a fact. We have different challenges. So this is, an, this is a perennial argument. So I think I've answered your question. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen,